chat GPT, artificial intelligence, is it capable of creating meaning or is it just parroting what we put into it? I've been writing about this in Bending Over Backwards, my, my memoir about the relationship between technology and spirituality and literature in that way enters almost in the realm of spirituality, it's an intangible capacity that writers have to evoke emotions and to evoke meaning. So are, uh, I, I've been following this for many years, and I mean, I know that in Japan, the algorithm has written novels that have participated in literary prizes and have won. But to this day, we have not seen uh, an algorithm that r seriously competes, because uh, there is obviously something missing there in the capacity to create meaning for the reader. I think that you wanted to see. You, um, I've, I've been, um, you know, following um, algorithm and AI for a while now, and um, I think what the system spews out is what you put in. And there is a deep unconscious bias in what is given to us when we ask for an input. So um, hopefully that is going to be challenged um, at some point in time, because unlike a writer's bias, which you're willing to buy into if it's, it's a writer you enjoy and whose work you enjoy. Uh, a system that serves a more universal audience, which is you know, almost like a cookie cutter, will um, have far more questions about bias um, around it. And I think it, that will be challenged, or it should be challenged. Who scored it? What are the kind of biases that have um, you know, crept in? How do they portray? Um, anything, whether it is feminism, whether it's race, whether it's inequality. And um, a writer is able to take a stand. I'm not entirely sure that chat GTP is at that state where it can take a stand and will take a stand because, um, you know, a nameless bunch of people have coded it in and we're basically getting what they want us to believe and whatever that collective is. Yeah, obviously the, the algorithm inherits the bias of the programmer, so that's why there's been a lot of criticism. Yeah. Feminists have explained why there needs to be reprogramming or w women programmers, right, to, to, to do that. But I think it brings it back a little bit to the question of what makes a book a success, How, what, what makes a book a literary success or a narrative success? What is the special quality? And I, I believe it's still human and it's not possible to program it yet. Chat GPT was a wonderful inclusion in the conversation. I think it brings us to the fact that um, what is good, um, the idea of what is good will also change with the idea uh, that the reader is changing and the reading tastes are changing. So what was considered good photography 100 years ago, a sort of formal composition, the play of light, in the Instagram generation with people used to seeing flat lighting, people being bombarded with imagery, now art photography is a kind of very uh, pulled back minimalist photography and that's considered good. So similarly, I think with readers and our, you know, the audiences are overlapping, being exposed to say chat GPT or, or a certain kind of writing, uh, what they consider good writing or then what makes a literary fiction novel, that changes because that by its very nature needs to be different from what is now a kind of popular kind of writing. So I think we have to factor in uh, the changing reading tastes also. 